Thanksgiving Eve service, and um, afterwards we're going to pray and make the tallest person in church put up the tree, but, uh, but on Saturday morning, <laughs> but Saturday morning starting around 10-ish, if uh, anybody wants to come and help, um, sorry, I'm just going to cry on the back. Uh, if anybody wants to can't come and help do the rest of the decorating. We're going to do it at 10 o'clock ish on Saturday morning. So, and then we'll be headlong into the Christmas season. Yes. Can't oh, believe yes. it. Oh, yes. like the break, break. And of course, pie and stuff <coughs> after the Thanksgiving Eve service. Yes, goodies. Make it worth pie. 
Okay. Pat's making a pie, so one pie. One pie. For all of us. <laughs> no, there's several pies. Okay. We'll make it all work, that's for sure. There's at least three point one four, right? Hmm? There's at least three point one four. Yes. <laughs> exactly. We'll be ready for it. <coughs> seeing no other account, seeing no other joints or announcements this morning. I don't have one. You know, I thought it would be another day we could celebrate today. Going to a bowl game, but I see that celebration has kind of been put off till next week. But we do have a celebration right here in church today. It is a 90th birthday right here for one of our members. One of those shy, tricky Bible members who's nowhere near the front of the church. <laughs> Happy birthday. Go. Fred. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Katie. Happy birthday to you. I just never knew there was anything as much fun as being 90. <laughs>
in our prayer of this morning. <coughs> o Christ, before whom all nations shall highly bow, before whom all rulers will cast their crowns, before whom all creatures shall acknowledge your rule, cause us to bow in adoration, cause us to cast all before you, and cause us to acknowledge your lordship. Now in this time together, now and when we separate, now and each day and hour. I have to angle the camera down a little bit. <laughs> okay, got everybody there. How many shoe boxes do we have this year? Fifteen. Fifteen shoe boxes, so fifteen families. That's only for the seventh floor. That's eight. Nineteen. Nineteen total. Nineteen total. And then the other's been done online. 
Yeah, yeah so how many? So 19, 19 here physically. And how many did it online? One, two. Somebody. I think somebody else did. Pam did too. Pam did too. Five online? Okay, so five online, so that's 24. What? My math is right. Boxes in various forms and everything. Thank you, I think each and every one. That's the best year we've had in a while. So yeah. thank you, yes. everyone. We've got our young folks up here that helped out with everything. Jackson making sure those rubber bands are really tight <laughs> so nothing falls out. We're gonna have a quick prayer of dedication on our shoe boxes. Father, we thank you, and we dedicate these shoe boxes this morning to those in need, to those who have wants to those we can help. We ask you to bless these shoe boxes, bless the works that the goods do inside, and bless the receivers that receive these gifts from this church. We ask for blessings on each and every one of us, and thank you for the opportunity to give. In your name, we're going to pray together this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, guys. Come on. Sit down. Well, you can play for us. <laughs> I do realize you're being watched very closely with that. Because <laughs> here he comes. You take the long way around. Avoiding Freya. You're with the viola and go the other way. This morning we're going to talk about gifts. And not gifts that you get under a Christmas tree or somebody hands you something. We're going to talk about gifts that we all have. And how do we share a gift this morning that we all have? Shoe boxes. Shoe boxes, exactly. We share of our time, of our giving, of our preparation, of getting all those boxes ready for people who really, really need them. That's an incredible gift. And you know, when we look around, we can see all the incredible gifts sitting right here in front of us today. A gift of speech, coming up and speaking. Our gift of just being here with us and having a good time in service with all of us. Our gift of a prayer leader. A gift of another prayer leader. And a gift of a musician as well as tremendously other things. So we all have gifts that we share and that we use all throughout our lives. And it's not gifts that you have in your hand like a gift of a pencil to write something. Gifts that God's given us to do things. We can play an instrument, we can play sports, we can take care of animals. Oh my goodness, new puppies, all sorts of things. So God's given us gifts that we can use all throughout our lives. Somebody over that box is back there. <laughs> He's looking for the big gifts to get into that box. <laughs> so you all have gifts, and we're celebrating those gifts today. Our gospel reading, Jesus is going to talk about gifts. Wow. What did you find? He's giving a gift. <laughs> oh, doesn't get better than this. You like to be clean. You're going to give another gift here. So you all have gifts that you give and you share. And it's so much fun when we get to do that. Because sometimes giving is much more fun than receiving. To give those boxes somebody who doesn't have what's in there, to bring words and prayers to people who need to hear things. Oh, well, we all love church on <laughs> the hot time around the church. I mean, I can't put those things to light. I'm not sure you can. He's going for fire and brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
sharing the fun times. So always remember, God gave you gifts, share them, have some fun with it, and enjoy the gifts that we have. So let's take a moment of prayer, and I won't say it, you guys got to say it pretty loud because Jackson's pretty far back and needs to hear it too. Dear God, Dear God we thank you, we thank you for, all the gifts for all the gifts that you give us, that you give us and we can share. And we, can share. And we promise, and we promise to, always make to always make the best use, the best use of everything you give us. Of everything you give us. Amen.
Field Concerto in C minor, uh, the first movement by uh, J.C. Bach. Beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing that gift with us. Continuing the work of this church, we do that through our offering and our giving. And our regular offering this morning is for the continuation of the works of this church. So I invite our ushers to again come forward for this morning's regular <coughs> offering. <laughs>
Our first reading is from Proverbs chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. <coughs> the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue <coughs> crushes the spirit. A fool spurns a parent's di discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. The house of the righteous contains great treasure, but the income of the wicked brings ruin. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, but the hearts of fools are not upright. Now we'll invite all our able to please stand for this morning's gospel reading. The gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to be in the 25th chapter, beginning with the 14th verse, where we hear a parable from Jesus this morning of the bags of gold. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five bags of gold went at once and put this money to work and gained five bags more. So also <coughs> the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have fulfilled with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. And his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and went out, and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. And his master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take, so take the bag of gold from him, and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has, whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A ten-year-old girl was asked by another question, what is it like to be a Christian? The ten-year-old little girl replied, it's like being a pumpkin. God picks you from the pack and brings you in. He washes you and washes away the dirt. He cuts open the top and scoops out all the yucky stuff. He removes the seeds of doubt, of hate, of greed, etc. And then he carves you a new smiling face and puts his light into your shine, into you to shine for all the world to see sharing of our gifts, that light coming out to others. We saw it this morning with our shoeboxes, the beautiful music, 
with the words that are brought to us, with the prayer that's to be brought to us in a little while. So the question is this morning, how have we chosen to the best to use what God's given us? How have we made the most out of what God's given to us? I'm sure we've all heard all the excuses all the time from people when they're involved in the work of the church, not wanting to become that involved. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm not educated in that. I don't have time. I'm not good enough. I could never do that. Think back in our Bible stories that we've heard over time. Remember when God asked Moses to tell Pharaoh, let the children of Israel go? Remember that great movie a few years back? Goes into the court and says that. But before that, Moses used a number of phrases to complain about what he didn't have. Who am I that I should go? Talking to God about that. Who the heck do you think I am going out there doing that? Suppose they don't believe me. I've never been that eloquent. After listening to Moses' complaints, God said to him, what is that in your hand? In essence, what God was telling him right at that time, he says, Moses, I'm not interested in what you don't have. I'm only interested in what you do have. <coughs> Reach out your hand and certainly I will be with you. I will be right there with him. For years, and some of you probably remember this, the Army of Recruitment Advertisement, challenging the young men to join. Be all you can be. You probably remember that. It's been around a long, long time. As Christians, the challenge to us is to be all that God created you to be. Be all that God created you to be. And are we doing that? That's our question today. Are we doing that? Being all we can be. We've got a brand new year coming up. Sooner than we think. We're going to have turkey and pretty soon we're going to have presents and say, well, where did that season go? We'll be taking down the tree that we talked about putting up this morning. Coming right at us. And we can move into just being that person God wants us to be by being all we can be as Christians. The parable of the talents this morning tells us that God creates and God calls each and every one of us to be co-workers in the unfolding of history. Yes, we're part of history. Passing down tradition. Being there for others. Doing all those things. And to help this become a reality, God invests in each and every one of us. But he also kind of expects a return on that investment. Putting good stuff into you, I expect you to use it. Kind of like our story this morning. In the parable of the talents, a man set out on a journey, trusting his property to servants, giving them those bags of gold. It's important to recognize from the story this morning, as we talked about and read through it, that this man represents God. Jesus has given us this great parable that we can understand, but he's talking about his father. It's the God who owns the world, and we're all of his servants, each and every one of us. The word talent has come into our language from this very parable. That's where it all started and continued along. Rather than money, it has come to mean abilities and special gifts. Those things we can do, those gifts that we have. So when we look at it, each of us can ask, what did Jesus mean by the talent? The talent that each of us has. Everything we have and everything we are comprised of talents that God gave to each and every one of us to do our jobs, to be there, to be a part of all of this. And this includes our abilities and every precious moment of every day, every week, every month that's given to us. It's been a gift that's given to us. Our material and financial resources we share in our gifts. Our relationship with loved ones and friends. We saw that very clearly again this week. Being there with our family. The gift of God's salvation and redemption through Jesus Christ. All that Jesus did went through for each and every one of us. So in short, our talent is everything in our very lives. All of this is entrusted to us by God. And we're called to be good stewards of what he's given to us. Now the work of the kingdom is so great, many people wonder why God left it to us. Why did he give me part of this? Why did we have a little piece of this? But he has. And we must keep in mind as we do it, we do it because other people's souls are at stake too. Leading them to God. Being there. Sharing that word. You know, it makes me think of that story that we heard a little while ago about your daughter 
telling her girlfriend about Jesus, and 50 years later, it worked. It's a little conversation. 50 years continued along. But just think how exciting that makes our Christian life. If we could run into somebody 50 years from now and say, you know, you made a difference when you came and helped me, when you played beautiful music and showed God's gifts, when you brought us a reading and told me about my life, beautiful music we get to sing to, a prayer that we're going to be led through, all those different things. 50 years from now, somebody said, that really made a difference in my life. How would we feel right at that moment? But we sometimes live like that one talent person from our story today. Got that one bag of gold and we just kind of bury it somewhere. We're told not to keep a bushel over our life. But we can continue and do things all throughout our lives. Because when we live like this, like the guy that just hid it underneath, instead of our faith being an adventure, adventure, it becomes a heavy chain of obligations. Oh, all those things. We cling to the status quo. Hopefully we can get by without too many crises. We just need to get to the end of the day and hope he quits talking by noontime because lunch is coming. We're content with the usual routine. Well, we did it that way, we're going to continue. We don't invest ourselves in the work of the kingdom of God. We don't live up to our calling and live into that calling. Big things and small things. The one town Christian fails to see how much they're really needed. Needed, just like the people that need those shoe boxes right there. They need those things. Joseph Cole, they need those things. The food pantry, they need those things. All of those things are needed. And in actuality, no Christian is one talented. We all have so many different talents that we can share, and we do share right here in this church. We can all pray. Those prayer warriors go at it all the time, helping out with all the people that are prayer list that's on the back of our bulletins. And if there's any changes, at least I'll hear Kate know. We can make that change. We can go to the Bible studies. We can learn, understand, ask questions, do all those things, and we can share our gifts of that knowledge. And we can serve by being there for others in those times. Just imagine what can be done for the kingdom of God in this community with each and every one of us doing these simple little things that we can do. Possibilities are endless. Being kind, kind is free. We can do that all the time. This church right here that we're in today is alive with potential. And that potential has been given to each and every one of us. We all make this place go. And especially the last few months, we've proven that we can all band together and continue in the face of some adversity of not having a key person here with us. God calls us to realize the potential of our lives. To use those gifts that we've been given, good things, the fun things, to maximize all those years and days that we're given, to use them and really make it worth it. And this should be exciting for everybody to use and do, just like we talked about it, how excited to be 90 years old and continuing to do fun things, being involved. In our gospel lesson, there's also the servant that's given five bags of gold. Five bags of gold, and the other one's given one. When it came time for accounting, they weren't judged on how much they got on an absolute scale. They were judged in accordance with what they had been allotted, what they had been given to use in their lives. So important a factor is not that what we have or what we gain, it's important of what we've done with those gifts that we've been given. So this morning, as we go forward, think about what God's, the gifts God's entrusted you with. Is it the gift of music, the gift of gab, the gift of just being kind? We talk about those little things, and I'm going to talk about them forever, holding that door for somebody, carrying a bag out. For me, and some of us taller folks, me and Craig, when we're in the store and somebody's there, can you get that thing off the top shelf for me? And we just reach up there and pull it down, and they're reaching up and can't get there. Little bitty things we can do that cost us nothing, except just a moment of time. Think about what your talents are, because there's many of them, each and every one of us, and if we're putting them into good use for the kingdom. When I began ministry inquiry, <coughs> back in the day we had to go through an inquiry process, and it was with Pastor Sherman. Oh yes, 
I sat on the other side of the table the room went dark, that light came down. <laughs> yes. And she asked, what, is you, what are you going to do? What is your ministry going to look like? <laughs> they had those eyes, if you remember. She would sit across from you and sit there and wait for that answer. I was able to tell her what I had envisioned, what I had thought, what I was being called to. And it's what God's entrusted, not into only me, but into all of us that we can share. At that moment when I was asked, I had to say something right then and there. Whoa, I hadn't thought about this question coming up, but there it was. And that's the question for all of us. How are we going to use those talents? Where are we using those talents? How are we continue to use those talents as we go forward? We're to be the peacemakers, the comforters, filled with love and mercy, doing everything for the good of God and full for our neighbors. That's the most important thing, is sharing those talents. The talents that we see each and every week in and out of this building. We see them right here for an hour on Sunday, but they're out there all week long doing all those things. Makes me think of that story from Freya a few weeks back or a couple months or whatever it was over at the restaurant when the old guys asked her to play something that she had her violin with. Simple thing to do. Brought joy into their life, even for just a few moments. And we can do all of those things. So if we think of those things we can do, that nobody in the world can do quite the way we do, is it our laugh? Is it our smile? Is it an ability to encourage and to include somebody to go forward? Is it an ability to earnestly pray? Our prayer warriors are really, really something here. Is it a loving tone? People love to hear your voice. Can you speak to them just hearing your voice? Or is it a skill, maybe in music, or art, or teaching, or managing? All sorts of things that we're all involved in. What are those things? that the owner of all things has entrusted to each and every one of you. And how have you responded to that trust? How have you responded to that? And what will you do with that trust in the upcoming brand new year? Just a little over a month away. We'll be in 2024. So think about your gifts, how you share them today, how we'll continue to share them, and not hide them under a bushel or put them in the ground like that one servant. Because God hasn't given them to us, he expects us to use them, and he loves watching us use them and enjoy them. God loves you. Amen. And as we think about God this morning that has given us those amazing gifts, gifts to do all the things we do in our lives, and we do use all of them each and every day, let's take a moment as we start our time of prayer, of silent prayer. Turn directly to God where we can talk to him about God, what gifts do you want me to use the most of? What gifts do I really have that you've seen that maybe I'm not aware of? And how do I make the best use of what you've entrusted? So let's begin with that moment of silent prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for those amazing gifts that you've entrusted to each and every one of us. We thank you for the ability to share those gifts, to bring joy to others, to bring laughter or a smile, to be those people that others want to see and be around them, to want to hear and to want to enjoy time with. We thank you for all those opportunities to share for all of the opportunities to show your love in this world, for all the opportunities you give us each and every day. Lord, we love it that we can lift up our joys and our concerns to you. And we do lift up those in our prayer list. We lift up those who have gone through tremendously rough times, the Bittner and Barron families. We lift up those, Lord, who have no voice that will be a voice for them. 
the ones who suffer in silence, the ones whose prayers are known only to you. We lift up each and every one to you and ask for your blessings upon them, to be with them and to bless them. We also thank you, Lord, for the beauty of this day, this time together, the fun times coming up of Thanksgiving where we share a meal and time and fellowship with our families and friends. We thank you for all these things, the changing of the seasons, the different colors, the music that we get to enjoy. And we especially thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us so very much during this time here. Please join me in a Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us to evil. stand for our closing hymn this morning, and that hymn is going to be hymn number 563, Count Your Blessings.
and in his name. And may God bless each and every one of you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.